Hello everyone, this is Take from BakingTalk.com and I'm coming to you here from the Kowloon Walled City Park. Now, this is uh, kind of a cool place. The history is pretty cool. Uh, look it up on YouTube. What happened was criminals and, and people that were illegal immigrants to Hong Kong would flee to this area and they built up their own city. It made an appearance in a few movies, one of them most famously uh, Bloodsport, where they're look, walking through like this weird little corridor area. Uh, and that famous battle scene, it was supposed to, I'm not sure if it was even actually taken in the actual uh, the city or not, but um, look it up, it's a kind of a unique history. What I wanted to do was come here, I'm not even sure if I'm allowed to even shoot inside, but I'm going to try. But I'm here to do my uh, final review of the Leica MA, uh, specifically uh, I'm doing a review of a film camera. and. Uh, before I came on this trip, as I mentioned, I was gonna take lots of film with me, which I did. And I was able to not only shoot myself, but uh, give a couple roles to some of my friends, Victor from Barton 1972, as well as uh, Tommy Chong, who uh, was from Revolver, moved to Australia, and now he's back in Hong Kong. And I've been able to experiment with some new films, Cine Still, 800 Tungsten Balance, which I was introduced to by Joseph of Meteor. So thank you so much, Joseph. You, uh, you gave me a role as well, but you got me addicted to this, that cine look. So um, overall, this is really about, um, not so much a review about this camera, although it is. The Leica MA with the 35 Lux. So thank you so much, Leica North America for the loan. Um, being able to shoot fully mechanical, this camera does not have a place for a battery because there's no built-in meter. So you have to handheld meter but I got so good shooting with this that other than checking once when I started I pretty much knew what to set the exposure at so let's uh, dig in let's sneak in and see if I can start shooting some video in there and talk about shooting film as well as shooting with this Leica film camera so as I mentioned earlier uh, the reason why I not the only reason, but one of the main reasons why I came to Hong Kong to shoot film was because I was uh, going to interview uh, Michael Kenna, who is a famous landscape photographer who pretty much only shoots film. He does some digital, but it's, a lot of it was meant for commercial work, but really for himself, for his own personal work, he always shoots film. So I thought in homage of him, I would shoot film. Uh, as many of you know, I started off with film. I, like many of us older ones that are older than the age of 30, um, I worked for Kodak for a decade and film was free for me and so it was easy even at the time when film wasn't that expensive for me to shoot film and many of my friends and colleagues owned labs so getting film developed and processed was either free or almost free and even when I left Kodak in 2007 it took a while for me to really embrace digital so really for the majority of the um, 20 years that I've been shooting seriously, I've been shooting film mostly, but you know, the past five, 10 years, it has slowly shifted over to shooting digital. And it was really nice to, if I can say, come home to shooting film. Um, this is really isn't gonna be a debate about is film better than digital. Uh, better is such a, you know, sometimes people see photography in a, in a very technical, scientific way. Uh, almost like, you know, let's just say trying to analyze food in a technical way. Like, is this, does this taste better? Well, taste or flavor is a mixture of many things. Saltiness, sweetness, and those things you can measure, right? You could say, is this drink saltier? I mean, is this drink uh, sweeter or less sweet than another drink? But then in the end, you can say, well, which do you like better? You know, some might like sweeter, some might like less sweet. And same with film. Um, you know, grain and pixel is different. You can mimic it one way or the other, including scanning digital uh, film files into digital and giving it more of a digital type look, I guess you can say, and vice versa. You can make digital look like film. But uh, to actually shoot film, I think it's the act of shooting and not knowing. That is really the pleasure. And I liken it to drinking wine out of a paper cup versus a very nice cup. Um, in the end, the flavor of the wine doesn't really make a huge difference if you drink out of a paper cup or a glass, a nice wine glass. But there is this um, humanness. Uh, to it where we attach meaning to things and I think that's the important thing about shooting film is that you know we are not um, animals in the sense that you know a horse can eat hay or grass its whole life and never complain but a human 
you know, your favorite food, let's say it's sushi, after about a month, you're sick of it, right? Nothing has changed, the sushi hasn't changed, but really your perception of it has changed. And so, same with shooting film versus digital. Um, there's aspects of film that I like, and I'll post pictures. For instance, the Cinestill 800T has this look. It's an actual movie film that a single layer has been removed, so it's, you got to, it allows you to actually um, process it in C41, and you get this weird glow coming out of any ambient light, uh, ambient light, any artificial light. And yes, you can imitate it uh, with digital in Lightroom or Photoshop, but uh, there is this sort of a film texture that you'll be able to see that um, the grain, is it sharper than digital? You know what, I actually think now digital is sharper than film uh, to um, for most uh, applications. I mean, you could be shooting large format, medium format, and you will still get sharper images with high res scans than you can with digital. But overall, shooting 35 mil, uh, I don't think it's a matter of what in terms of sharpness, there's just this, this mood and feel to film that's different aesthetically, although you can mimic it to a certain degree uh, in Lightroom, but it's better to just shoot straight out. So right out of camera, Cine still, uh, 800 tungsten balance, so it's balanced for tungsten light, so it has this weird greenish kind of a cast to it, and it really does feel like uh, movie film. Likewise, when I'm shooting with the Pro 400H, shooting with the uh, 400, uh, the Pro, high neg uh, film simulation in, in the Fujifilm uh, uh, digital cameras, which I like. I like the film profiles in the Fujifilm. In fact, I use it almost for every, like right now I'm using classic chrome for this video. But um, shooting with film that's designed to have a certain look and feel, like the Acros 100, the Pro 400H, um, it definitely looks different. Very little tweaking, and you're almost forced to get that look. Like Acros 100, you have to shoot a 100, you're forced to. Pro 400, you could probably push it to 800 or 1600, but I kept it at 400. And with those limitations, you shoot within those limitations. So um, I had a good time shooting within those limitations. As you can see, I'm shifting around here, not only for aesthetics, but it's been a horrible week. It's been raining all week, so I'm just trying to find air so I can have a little bit of cover, even the, the camera's getting wet. For those of us that grew up in the film age, you know, imagine being able to change your sensor whenever you feel like it. And you know, that's what it was back then when you changed film. Uh, today, when you shoot with Sony, shoot with Fuji, with Canon, there's a certain algorithm, a certain way a sensor is made, and the way that, that light is, um, is um, translated into a visual format, and that is pretty much set. You can, you can uh, Photoshop as much as you want. Sometimes that ingrained, that embedded uh, file is just the way it looks and you're stuck with that with your camera. But with film, every time you switch out a new roll of film, you get different grain, you get different uh, ISO speeds, different qualities of color, and yes, you can tweak it after you scan it, or even in the darkroom days, you can take it in the darkroom and add different filters and, and change the processing times, both for the film as well as the paper, and changing different papers. But, um, you know, in a way, as uh, I was speaking to uh, different photographers that shoot film here in Hong Kong, uh, uh, mo those of us that shoot digital, we tend to shoot digital first, digital raw, and then all the processing comes after the fact in general. In the film days, you typically, for those of us that didn't do that much darkroom work, we pre-thought everything in terms of, you know, we filtered or we looked for a certain aesthetic before we shot. So with Cinestill 800T, it's a tungsten balance film. It has a certain look. It renders uh, strong light in a certain way. There's like a glowing halo. And we thought about that all ahead of time. And then when we start shooting, because you can't see the image, you know, I realized I got better at being able to imagine the shot. So we talk about imagining shot, don't chimp. But you know, in the end, it's a safety mechanism when you can chimp and when you're doing important pictures, there's nothing wrong with looking, at least making sure that it's in focus or your exposure's correct. And once you get going, the light doesn't change or the distance in unit subject doesn't change. Um, you know, you really shouldn't chimp, but you know, it's always there that you can look at. That's why I like the Leica MD digital. But uh, with film, you just can. So, you know, you excitedly run and get your film developed, which is very cheap here in Hong Kong. Uh, 35 Hong Kong dollars to develop and scan your negatives. So that works out to be a Canadian, it works out to be a, just under $6 a roll, so $3.75 to $4 US, which is very uh, reasonably, uh, it's a reasonable amount of money to spend to develop and scan. So shooting film in Hong Kong is not that expensive. And um, so you pre-think 
you pre-visualize, you shoot, you get your images, and then you still have to, you know, work on the images. But I realized, you know, very little tweaking in Lightroom, uh, a little bit of contrast, a little bit of uh, white balance, and that's pretty much it. I actually didn't even bother sharpening the images. You're more worried about the grain, and so I'm actually upping the luminance to sort of, you know, because it's 800 speed film. Uh, 100 speed is no problem with the Acros, but uh, you're fiddling that way. But in the end, as you can see, the images, um, the pictures. Uh, have a certain quality that is very different than my style when I shoot digital. Uh, is it better or worse? No, it's definitely not better or worse. It's just different. So I've been talking a lot about film, uh, but really this is supposed to be a review of the camera, but you know, you can't really talk about film cameras without talking about film as I mentioned because really the film is a sensor but this Leica MA uh, for those of you who love shooting Leica who love the older M2 the M3 the M4 the original M6 not the TTL uh, these are you know fully mechanical cameras uh, there's absolutely no place to put a battery uh, just springs and gears and the shutter and you know there's just very little to go wrong with these things I'm um, built like a tank um, if you are serious about film shooting it is great that a company like Leica still makes fully mechanical cameras. Now I had a chance to visit uh, Hasselblad Asia and they have the new digital backs that will go on the back of the older Hasselblads but they're no longer making uh, the old mechanical bodies anymore. I mean there's enough of them around that they don't have to but uh, it's unique that a company like Leica is still committed to making these mechanical cameras and I challenge companies like Canon, Nikon, uh, Pentax to create a film camera. It doesn't have to be a five, six thousand dollar camera. It could be a five, six hundred dollar camera. But uh, there is enough film shooters out there that want to shoot film. And those of you who shoot Leica, who want a new camera where there are brand new parts. You can send this in for servicing to Leica and there, all these parts are still new. And you know, in terms of, you know, you have an M2 or M3 and, you, and many of you who are serious will have multiple backup bodies, including dead bodies so that you have, you know, all the backup mounts, you know, uh, just as a backup in case something breaks and there's no parts for it that you can always get parts. But this is built like a tank. I know there was an issue with the slippage and many people said, well, when they shot, without film in it, it didn't seem to have a problem. But once they started shooting, you know, when you do quick one, two, three, sometimes it would slip. Uh, I, maybe it's just this copy, but I had no problems with slippage. Uh, perhaps it's the way I load it. I make sure there's enough of the leader caught within the spool. And then once I do two or three quick shots, I do tighten it a little bit here to make sure there's no slack in the film. And so maybe that's it, but I've gone through over 10 rolls here in Hong Kong. 12 rolls and I've had no problems with slipping. It's very smooth. Um, I like the uh, clockwise up uh, shutter dial and it's small so that it will work with the, uh, the old meter still. It has that little slit there between the half and quarter second. Um, it stops at 1 1000 so if you're shooting and you go to maximum shutter speed at 1 1000 then you know as you back up it's in full stop. So 1 1000, 500, 1 250th, 1 125th. 160th actually then there's uh, the flash sync of 145th 30th 15th so if you know your full stops and then the lens is all in half stops and you know how to light meter so you let's just say outside you meter it for sort of in the middle the neutral gray and then you know when it's extra bright you have to stop down two stops and when it goes into the shadows you have to stop down two and a half three stops well you just know right away right two and a half stops where you can either stop down the lens or you can stop, you can, you can speed up or slow down the shutter speed based on your ability to hand hold. So if you're starting at 1 1,000th and now you're going, you need, uh, you need to stop down, well, you can't go any faster than that. So you know you have to stop down the lens, right? And then as well, if you're down at 1 60th, 1 60th of a second and, um, you know, you want to make the exposure, you, don't, you want to go up more in EV, uh, same thing, you just have to open up the aperture, right? So maybe you're at f4, now you can open up f2, now you have to feel this more shallow, so now you have to be careful that, you know, you have to make sure that what you're shooting is in focus. And it's nice to have a 35, I'm actually, uh, you know, I had the chance to grab whatever lens, uh, naturally I would have probably gravitated towards 28, but I thought, uh, to be able to do one lens to do everything, 35 is probably the best lens to have. Uh, 35 Lux, if you can afford it, is great. Uh, if not, 
Um, the Sumacron, which is something that I've always had an affection for, especially the 50 mil Sumacron, because I find that the uh, 50 mil Lux is very hard to focus. So the 50 Sumacron, the F2, the 35 F2, the 35 Sumerit, or the, uh, I'm not even sure you can get an Elmar, but uh, you know, there's multiple versions of this lens. You don't need to spend that kind of money or looking for vintage lenses or Voigtlander or any, uh, you know, there's a, there's a, a, a Minolta made M mount lenses, Ricoh made M mount lenses, other brands make M mount lenses. So go to the vintage shops, find other vintage lenses. And that's kind of the beauty as I um, met many Leica photographers, many of them changed cine lenses to M mount. And so uh, you get this unique look. So we can't change uh, like digital, you can maybe change JPEG profiles, you can change different things. Uh, with the film cameras, either you change the film or you change the lens. And the quality of the lenses, I think, show through that much more in analog photography versus digital. In the sense that with digital, we tend to um, post-process enough so that sometimes it masks uh, a certain quality of a lens, unless the lens is very exaggerated and it has a certain type of bokeh. Where I've noticed that many of these guys that are shooting cine lenses, you look at it and right away you know, not that there's something wrong, but you're like, hmm, you did something different because I've never seen a lens look like that before. And especially when you look at the negatives. And so, uh, great time shooting with film. I'm happy that I did it. Uh, perhaps I'll integrate more film photography when I get back to Vancouver. Great camera for those of you who want to meter then there is the Leica MP which has a built-in light meter center weighted average makes it a lot easier I put extra strain on myself shooting with the MA but I just wanted to really uh, challenge myself and I think that's the thing about shooting film is that because I came from film got to digital it became easier I became lazier and so going back to film it kind of sharpened my skills and I like that I like challenging myself I don't want to buy a camera that makes everything easy for me and I think sometimes many new photographers seek that they want the fastest autofocus they want the uh, you know the the most megapixels the least amount of noise they want everything to be easy for them and so when something goes wrong it's easy you blame the camera well with this when you're out of focus there's nothing to blame I mean other than if the rangefinder focus uh, focusing mechanism is out of fo uh, uh, you know is, is out uh, there's very little to go wrong with these so when your exposure is off your focus is off you're the only one to blame so this truly feels like a tool where a digital camera that has all the bells and whistles is a device and it's easy to blame a device when you become um, dependent on it so uh, it's okay yeah 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 it's easy to blame a device when there's something wrong and so in a way it's a cop-out not that you have a device or a camera that has everything that's great because there's many of us uh, you know John Lehman the Global Mail good friend of mine he needs his equipment to work when he he just came back from the Olympics his equipment can't let him down but in the end it's his skill it's his ability to use these devices as tools that make him and his ability to take pictures shine over the average photographer like you and I but uh, as a photographer, don't allow the technology and the camera to become a crutch. Uh, a great way to challenge yourself is to shoot film, uh, buy an old K1000 or find your dad or your grandfather's old film camera, shoot, see what you're doing wrong, uh, improve upon it, and I guarantee you that when you go back to digital, your skills will have improved as a photographer. So uh, I had a great time shooting with this. I think that the Leica MA is a fantastic camera. Uh, the MP would be a little bit more fantastic if you want a built-in light meter. And then the M7, which uses e uh, electronics, uh, the shutter speeds will be more accurate and there's some features in it that's nicer. But if you want a fully mechanical camera that needs no batteries to run it, the MP needs batteries only for the metering. Without the, meter without the battery, it works just like an MA. So those two are great options for those that want to shoot Leica and want to shoot M mount but want a brand new body. So if you have an M2, M3, M4, M6, any of the you know M5, well that has the the uh, spot metering on there. But any older Leica, you want something brand new that's current, then the MA is a great option. I had a great time shooting film. It's great that a ca uh, camera company like Leica can still make mechanical cameras, fully mechanical. Uh, and companies like Fujifilm that still makes film and to be able to shoot and to process, you know, all in an analog format was a really great experience. I'm glad I was able to do it. 
Thank you Fujifilm Canada for still making film and giving me film. Thank you Leica North America for loaning me this camera and still making fully mechanical cameras. And thank you Joseph from Meteor for letting, introducing me to Cine Still Film, which I had a great time. So, in conclusion, believe in film, shoot film, film is not dead. I had a great time shooting film. I'm happy that I was able to shoot with this. Um, look forward to be able to shoot more film in Vancouver. Thank you so much for watching. More videos to come. Like if you like. Don't forget to subscribe. And I'm coming to you here again from the Kowloon Walled City Park. Look up the history of this park. It is pretty amazing. So a couple more days left here in Hong Kong. Look for more videos like this. Thanks for watching and we'll talk to you soon. Happy shooting.